Okay, I made a video yesterday about uh, new autofocus technology that uh, hasn't been brought to you yet. And you would think that uh, Canon and Nikon and everybody else would be trying to kill each other uh, to introduce new technology. That way they'd always have the leg up on the other company. But the fact is that this is a fact that every camera company would just crap their diapers if they were bringing you the latest technology. They're always at least two generations, sometimes three generations behind in the camera technology that they bring to you because they always have to have new stuff to roll out for you to desire some new latest uh, specification on a camera. And, you know, that's really true of every company, really. You know, they can't be constantly biting their nails trying to come up with new stuff. They always have to give you two generations behind. Now, I made a video yesterday about uh, new technology, which actually does exist in uh, some current high-end medical and military gadgets. It's an extremely fast, hubless motor, and uh, it has enormous torque potential and very, very low power consumption. Um, it's a very simple motor, uh, kind of like uh, Nikon's a silent wave motor here, but... The secret, the dirty little secret, which is the premise of this video, this is, by the way, the silent wave motor, but wait a minute, Nikon has two different silent waves. They're both labeled silent wave. One is awesome, which is this, with the stator and rotor. And then there's the other silent wave motor, which actually runs off of plastic gears and a little tiny uh, DC uh, ultrasonic motor. So here's the design of the standard silent wave motor, and I'll give you a list. Here is also one taken apart from a camera. Here you can actually uh, see the rotor and the stator and the rings and it's a very very simple elegant design. It's also rather expensive. Uh, it's kind of ironic that something so simple is uh, rather expensive but it's actually extremely high precision. Here's one torn apart. Here you can actually see the stator and how simple the design is. This is on Nikon's high-end lenses. Here's another view of the silent wave motor but there are Nikon has an array of lenses that are marked silent wave that are not. This is also a mechanism from a silent wave motor from a Nikon. Wait a minute, there are plastic gears there and a little tiny DC motor. Here's the DC motor also. See, plastic gears. Um, if you have an old Nikon D-series autofocus or a current new silent wave motor Nikon lens that's been dropped, for example, or been damaged, and the gears are grinding, you're like, how could that happen? This is a silent wave motor Nikon lens. I mean, there aren't any gears to grind. Oh yes, this is also a silent wave motor lens. Now, kind of ironically that Nikon used to have this on their website where they would actually show you, uh, it says this, we've gone to a page that doesn't exist here anymore. This is Nikon's own website. So they've removed that uh, from their page. Um, but here's the difference between the two. There's actually a ring type and a, a DC motor type. There's also an issue with torque. Um, now while the 14 to 24 is uh, an incredibly huge lens, which I have that lens, the only issue is how heavy is the torque required to drive the focusing element in the lens. So it might be a relatively small lens, but if the torque required to actually drive the lens is enormous, then there actually are some physical and uh, um, physical and uh, torque limitations that Nikon would choose this far, far cheaper and far, far inferior uh, motor uh, to drive the lens. Um, the 14 to 24, while it's an enormous lens, the driven element, meaning the autofocusing element, inside the lens is uh, actually relatively small and not difficult to drive, which is also uh, that coupled with the fact that it's their, one of their premier lenses, the reason why it uses the much more expensive uh, true silent wave motor. So they're actually, while well, Nikon labels everything silent wave motor, Nikon will not tell you that there are two totally different types of silent wave motor. I mean, there's the very simple and elegant true silent wave motor here uh, with the uh, stator, and then there is this Ajabi right here with the plastic gears, and oh my. Now, in Nikon's defense, compared to old D-series autofocus lenses, you know, you could buy a new one, and Nikon still makes some D-series autofocus uh, lenses, the lens is noisy as hell, so technically Nikon is the kind of accurate in that this is certainly an improvement, but it's still gear driven. He's got plastic gears there, baby, plastic gears. By the way, the Sigma crap actually has a belt on it, kind of like the belt on your car, like the tiny. <laughs> the, the Sigma lenses actually have a belt on them, which uh, is like, oh man, you know, there's a little rubber belt in like a timing man, that sucker will break on you. This is another reason why, one of many reasons why you wouldn't want a Sigma lens. Um, but anyway, so you've basically got 
well, not basically, you absolutely do have two different types of silent wave motor. You'll never tell. It's like, well, this is a Mark II silent wave motor. Yeah, but you have to know, well, what sort of silent wave motor is it? Here's a list, and I'll give you the link below. There's some inaccurate information on this page, but not regarding the lenses. The type that uses the DC motor and the type that actually uses the uh, true a statered um, simplex design, a ring design, a silent wave motor. But both of these are marked by Nikon as silent wave motors. But they're two radically different creatures. It's kind of like, uh, I don't know, it's kind of like uh, saying, uh, you know, an ostrich is a bird and uh, a hummingbird is a bird. It's like, well, yeah, they're both birds, but man, those two suckers are radically different. And that's the case here uh, with Nikon on their uh, silent wave motor versus the DC driven, which drives the driver driven element with plastic gears, silent wave motor. So you get the point. This is kind of one of Nikon's uh, dirty little secrets. There are some physical limitations with torque on the driven element, like I said. The, uh, the typical cases that the, the ones that use the crappy plastic gears are uh, mostly, but not always, they really, uh, you know, the crummy uh, super zooms like the 18 to 200, the cheap little 18 to 55. I mean, the the silent wave motor itself costs way, way more than the entire 18 to 55 kit lens costs. So obviously, in Nikon's defense, there's no way they'd use a true silent wave motor in that crappy ass little 18 to 55 uh, kit lens. So that's understandable, but not understandable why they would use it in the 80, excuse me, the 85 millimeter f 1.4G, which is an insanely expensive lens. And it could be that the driven element in there requires too much torque uh, for a standard silent wave motor, but that lens is incredibly expensive. It should not exist uh, inside the, the plastic chassis of that 85mm f1.8G. But generally speaking, the Nikon's high-end lenses with smaller driven elements like the 24 the 12 to 24 2.8, some of the 300mm uh, 2.8s, um, well, it's a huge lens, the driven element isn't that small, isn't that big. So, anyway, so that's one of Nikon's dirty little secrets. I'm glad I could bring that to you. And you could research it more if you want, but just remember because it's marked a silent wave motor, doesn't mean it's a silent wave motor because this, mm, you know, is not like this, you know, because these are two radically different things, even though they're marked the same by Nikon. Thanks for watching. Bye.